I'd like to welcome you guys back. Frontosa for life here. And as promised, here are my wild caught Frontosa. Um, there are two males and four females in here, if I'm not mistaken. And um, these fish look very similar, so it's it's not that easy to eye male for female ratios. Um, you really have to be buying from a trusted source. And as they get above about three years old, you can start to see some traits. Um, the males do end up growing much larger than the females. So the two males here are larger, but the tricky thing is um, in this specific tank, this is the 135 acrylic. In this tank, I have a, a female in here that's pretty large. So um, sometimes it just throws me off. I'm going to uh, feed them some krill. Um, they love it. And um, the thing I love about wild caught fish is uh, just looking at them and thinking what they might have seen or been through in that lake. And I'm talking about Lake Tanganyika. It's the second largest lake in the world. And um, there's over 200 species of um, cichlids in this tank. And there's over 250 species of different cichlids in Lake Tanganyika. Um, these guys are at the top of the food chain in that lake. They prey on smaller fish. Um, if, if I had to guess, uh, the ones I have, they're between four and six-ish years old. Um, at least that's what I was, you know, told when I got them. And from the size, I can pretty much agree with that. Um, so I'm just here to show you the fish a little bit. I'm going to play some relaxing music. And um, we're going to go over some of the facts about these guys. And also, just to help you out if you decide to keep them. Um, some of you know what you know. Um, I'm talking to uh, more of the newbie when it comes to keeping these fish or maybe you've never had a solid interest in these fish. Um, as I said, they come from Lake Tanganyika. Um, it's 12,000 square miles, about 12,700 square miles to be exact. Um, it's humongous. Um, like I said, when buying these fish, you want to get them from a trusted source. Frontosa are not cheap to begin with. And, the, and I'm talking the tank raised fish. Um, so if you're going after wild caught, you can multiply that by 10 exponentially. So you definitely want to go through someone you can trust or, you know, from looking up the business, making sure they have a good reputation. Um, these fish in particular are MOBA. And I'm going to put up the collection points so that you can see um, where exactly some of these fish come from. Um, and uh, as we go through the lake, you'll see the collection points that have the darker blue frontosa. And these guys are a little harder to get to. Um, they're down a couple hundred feet deep. And uh, when they're caught, they have to bring them up in stages so that um, these fish don't get the bends. Um, they stay pretty deep in the water um, so there's like uh, the darker blues for it like I said these are MOBA there's Makula Campampa was one of the um, darker variants but uh, you don't see them a whole lot anymore here and there but just not a whole lot anymore uh, for whatever reason over there with the collection points um, definitely definitely want a big tank for these guys um, 75 gallons minimum um, but if you're looking to keep a group like this you need a big tank you know we're talking 100 plus gallons um, they need the space uh, they're peaceful but uh, when it comes to breeding they can get a little feisty um, as far as my aquascape and how I keep this tank uh, pretty much like an open floor plan with a few rocks um, these fish can startle and dart across the tank so you definitely want to make sure 
you have space so they're not hitting their heads on the rocks and hurting themselves. Um, high protein diet, you know, I feed krill, um, North Fin, and that's pretty much what I do. And I've never really had an issue. Um, you definitely want to make sure you're keeping up on your tank maintenance. Um, I do. I clean once a week. I only feed them every other day. You know, these fish in the wild, they really don't eat every day. Um, they spread it out. So, you know, um, you can do what you choose to do. But um, at this size and at this point, they can go every other day. It's not really a big deal. Um, use your own discretion when it comes to the eating habits of your fish and the size of your fish. Um, definitely high pH. You can go as high as 9.0 for the pH. 8 to 8.5 is the sweet spot. Um, but these are definitely high pH fish. Um, the lake in the wild stays very stable. So uh, you definitely want to make sure your tank conditions are stable. Um, and some people ask, well, how do you really know if they're wild caught fish? Um, again, a trusted source. And one thing that I've learned over the years, you can see the female swimming by right there. If you look between her black bars, you can see some dark specks. And um, you'll notice this for several of the fish, even when I show you my 100 gallon tank with uh, another wild caught group of Frontosa. If you look closely at some of the females, they have what's called lake spots. And um, so far, with the limited research that we know, it's something in Lake Tanganyika that they eat, um, maybe a certain type of snail or something like that, that gives them these dark spots, little dark spots on their, uh, between their bars um, where the white pigment is. So that's pretty interesting to know. And, um, you know, something really unique that, that I learned over the years. Um, other than that, I mean, these fish can live for up to 25 years. Uh, but I, I would say that's a very extreme circumstance, but they can live for a long time. If you do your maintenance and, um, just take care of them, man. Um, and just watch the behavior. Um, they are harem fish. They love to be kept in groups. They do better in groups. Um, so you really don't want to just take one front or two frontosa and just throw them in a tank. Um, you know, um, it also helps to curb aggression with any cichlid when you're dealing with cichlid in groups versus, you know, um, one or two fish in a tank. So in the wild, these fish are predators, so they will prey on smaller fish. So uh, if you think you're gonna throw a two or three inch fish in here, that fish is gonna disappear. That's the long and short of it. That fish will be no more. Um, they love their protein and they'll, they'll get it from your new fish if they have to. So um, you wanna keep fish the same size with these guys because you know they get humongous. Males can get up to 12 inches. Um, females usually between eight and 10 on an extreme scale. Like I said, I have a larger female in this tank, which really blows my mind. But um, the males still tend to be larger as they grow up. And um, it just always amazes me. Like I said, I just wonder, you know, with these, how these fish survived in the wild and what they seen and you know, especially when they were small, I know um, the mother is really protective of these cichlids earlier on in the wild when she's carrying them and keeping them near. And um, they will go to extremes to chase away predators. So now we move over to the 100 gallon. I have uh, one male and three females in here. And um, this is by far the largest frontosa male I've ever kept. Uh, he just, he was already a nice size when I got him, but uh, he just seemed to have a growth spurt and he's bigger than the males in the other tank. Um, now, one thing about wild caught fish, they can be very timid. 
um, especially earlier on. I haven't had these guys super, super long um, in this tank. So uh, sometimes they huddle up in the corner and stay there for a while, unless you're feeding them, of course. But um, yeah, they, they, they dart at the drop of a hat and they'll go hide because that's just their nature. They're used to uh, being down deep where no one can stare at them in a clear box. So um, the, this group's a little more timid and um, it seems to be the male sometime and the females will follow whatever he does. But um, yeah, I got I have less in here because uh, this is slightly smaller than my 135. So, you know, again, you always want to be mindful of the size of your tank when it comes to Frontosa. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll play a little music and uh, let you check these guys out. They're not as flashy as the other tanks that I uh, have the other African cichlids in, the peacocks and things of that nature. These guys are chill, laid back. Unless there's some food in the water or some breeding happening with some aggression. Other than that, these guys chill. They're slow swimmers, but they're beautiful to look at. And um, the idea would be to take one humongous tank and throw them in there. But, you know, we'll see down the road. Uh, like I said, I enjoy these fish. I hope you do. Any questions, get in the comment box. Let me know. Um, I've kept them a numerous amount of years. Different types of frontosa, different groups, different types of wild caught. And um, it's been a pleasure. I enjoy it. So um, any questions, get in the comment box. Hope you enjoyed it.